Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you the fifth episode in our walkthrough for Nancy Drew, Legend of the Crystal Skull. Best just got finished talking to uh, Dr. Gilbert Buford about Dr. Bollet's death, so let's give Nancy a call and fill her in on what we learned. Hello? Hi, Nance. Okay, here's what's been happening at my end. And that's pretty much it. Good work. I'll take it from here. Thanks again. Good luck. Bye. All right. So Dr. Buford knew quite a bit. Let's see. Maybe we can check in with Hello Renee. again. I'd better get going. Come see me anytime. Or maybe we can talk to Henry. Yes? I'll let you get back to work. Sounds good. Guess not. All right. Well, we got a few things going on here. Dr. Buf... No, Professor Hotchkiss told us that um, Bruno Bollet said the eyes have it when talking about his... Um, um, just lost my train of thought when they were talking about uh, his crystal skull. He, what if he meant the eyes as in the eyeballs have it? Like these ones that we've been finding all over the place. So, I think we should try and find them. I also think maybe we should go explore the cemetery a little bit more because we haven't looked at all of the places in the cemetery. And I think that might be important for helping us figure out more. What's this? Huh. To figure out if there's anything camouflaged in that design, I'm gonna need some paper. Oh, that looks a lot like the, um, rubbing that we found in the house, the crow rubbing. Okay. Huh. We need to get some paper. Let's just go back the way we came. I believe it was this way. See, I knew, I knew exploring the cemetery would help us find something to do. Maybe Renee has some that we can use. Let's ask her. Hello again. Do you by any chance have some plain paper that I could use? I most certainly do. But it's up in my room, and I'm afraid I cannot retrieve it for you until I'm finished here. You get the sudden urge to draw a picture? Something like that. I know, I'll help you. That way you'll get done faster. Gracious, you are the picture of impatience, aren't you? Well, I appreciate the offer, but here, why don't you just take this instead? It's an extra key to my room. The paper's in a drawer in my nightstand. I have to keep it hidden on account of that paper thieving iguana. Just go on up and help yourself. But make sure you lock the door when you leave, you hear? You I trust. But Henry, him I do not. I really appreciate this. And long as you're going up there, my appetite could use a little placating. So I would be much obliged if you would bring me a candy bar from my nightstand. And take one for yourself while you're at it. Ooh, we have a key to Renee's room. I love getting keys to new locations. We have more stuff to explore. Let's go up the creepy dark stairway. I love rainstorms, and I kind of enjoy when the power goes out, but not in an unfamiliar place. Then it's creepy. Creepy room. Okay, what do we got? What on earth? Whoa. Is she doing magic on her wall? That's creepy. She's got some hats. What do we got over here? She's got like herbs hanging from the mirror. She bought hiccup powder. That looks exactly like the powders that are at Zeke's. So she, I bet she bought it from there. Anything else? 
No. Those are pretty paintings. They don't really go with her wallpaper, though. Okay, I'll grab some paper. And she needed some Coco Kringles. She said I could... Whoa! Goodness. One for Renee. These are Wickford Coco Kringles. They were first introduced in Secret of the Scarlet Hand, made from chocolate from Treasure in the Royal Tower. And one for me. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. Throw that away. If you want, you can keep eating as many Coco Kringles as you want, but you will get Nancy sick. Ah, heck, let's do it. Yum. Gosh, these things are good. Don't overeat, Nancy. Yum. Gosh, these things are good. Can't remember how many she has to eat before she gets sick. Mm, mm, mm. Because that's four now. I mean, she doesn't eat anything else. I feel like she needs mm. to eat all the chocolate. Yeah. Mm. How is she going to have energy to do anything else? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, Nancy. What was that? That's so creepy. That is um, Naughty Tina, I think, from The Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. It's definitely one of Camille's dolls, but I'm pretty sure it's Naughty Tina. And she was totally just rocking the rocking chair somehow. That's so weird. Okay, ooh, what's this? A secret trunk with a funky lock on it. Okay, so the way we open this lock um, is by making the designs for each of these locks. So let's see. That's got like four lines. That has a loopy thing that goes down here. That has lines. Okay, so we definitely need two for that one. Not that. Not that. Not that one either, because it's got that that line on the top, and this one doesn't have a line. Oh, okay. So, two o'clock, or I guess more like one o'clock, and five o'clock. Not that. No. Not that. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That is it. And then that thing. And then these. There we go. Alright, see, we already got the first one. Perfect. Okay, so now we need, I think, that, and we need, ooh, that looks more like it. Hmm. Let's see. But there's these two little lines that I don't really see on there. Those are lower. This one's pretty busy. Not that. That kind of looks like something. Not that. Not that. Definitely need that one. So, two down from three o'clock. We need that. Two down. Is this one? Yeah. And then... What are we missing? There is a fly in my house, and it's really annoying me. Sorry, I'm getting super distracted by this darn fly. It keeps landing on me. Hopefully it'll go away. Okay, there's that, and then we there were like circles. Where? Oh, that was it. Okay, perfect. Got that one. <laughs> 
Okay, this one has like a loopy thingy, and then there were some circles. That could be it. That could be it. That could be it. <laughs> no, those things are too low. So it was this one and this one for sure. That looks promising. And then we need something that has like the loopies and the circles. That one, there we go. Okay, and now we need wavy thing. Eh, uh, not that. Not that. Not that. So none of the first four. Definitely need that one. So we need the fifth one. Um, that's not quite right. No. That looks right. So we need five, eight. This one. Nope, not that one. Okay, that one. Six, five, nine, eight, the one way at the bottom. Sorry, I just tried to smack the fly, if you heard that. <laughs> oh, and this one. And then, one, two, three, four, five. No, darn it, I hit the wrong one. That one. Five, six, seven, eight. There, -ha! we got into the secret chest. What's inside? Who do signs and symbols? To most people, spells that are cast using words spoken aloud sound like gibberish, repetitive, nonsensical, and annoying. But these are powerful spells indeed, so powerful that there are only two ways to negate them. One is to discern the precise meaning and purpose of the spell and to vocalize the appropriate counterspell. But this demands intimate knowledge not only of hoodoo words, but of the motivations of the spell's creator, and this is often impossible. The more common method of disenchantment involves writing the symbolic equivalent of the spell on an object placed between the originator of the spell and its recipient, a practice known as spectriloquy. Once a spell is broken down into individual sounds, each sound is translated into a letter from the spectral alphabet and then drawn left to right on a fence, wall, window, etc. The spectral alphabet is comprised of 28 symbols and is based on four basic vowel sounds. A, O, U, E. Almost all hoodoo words can be represented by modifying these four basic symbols. So we can figure out what Renee was writing on her wall with this book. That's interesting. I don't know really how that would be helpful to us right now, but it's good to know. Okay. Let's... Can't look in her armoire. Let's head out now. Creepy. Super creepy. Now we've got some paper. We can bring this to the cemetery and do those um, rubbings. Let's ask Renee to, let's give her her chocolate first You bring me that Coco Kringle bar like I asked? Right here. Bless you. I'm so hungry I could devour these plants I'm potting up, dirt and all. How else may I be of service to you? Those weird symbols on the wall in your room, do you know who painted them? I did. Fact of the matter is, there's a spirit living in that wall. A spirit? Got a voice that it sends shivers down the spine of Dracula himself. Used to hear it sometimes, in the dead of night, half talking, half whispering, saying this one word I never heard before, like it was from a language no one on earth spoke. And suddenly, I knew. The spirit was trying to cast a spell on me. So I got me a book and found out that by painting the word I heard on the wall, syllable by syllable, in hoodoo signs, I could counteract the word's power. And you know what? The spirit has not spoken that word or any other since. What was the word? Darling, a sack full of water moccasins couldn't get me to say that word out loud. Nor will I write it down, no sir. Not ever, ever, ever. I'll see you later. Come see me anytime. 
I mean, I don't blame you. It was pretty creepy. Okay, let's go to the cemetery real quick and do the rubbings. So we go straight here and then straight again. And here we go. Okay, so there's one here. You take the piece of paper, put it over, and then Nancy will use the piece of coal that she took from the fireplace. So there's a worm. That's interesting. I think this is the crow that we already know about. Yep, there's a crow. And there's bones. And then there's a coffin. All right. Well, maybe we can bring these back to the cemetery and see if, not the cemetery, the model cemetery and see if there's anything useful. But for now, I think I'll leave this part here. Thanks so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.